Oh, can you hear that there? So right there, it's actually modulating those repeats. That's totally, that's insane. I've got a really cool and easy project to build today. Probably one of the easiest builds ever. Batteries that are losing their voltage can do some really magical things to your effects pedals. But the problem is it's really tricky to get repeatable results because there is often a specific voltage that'll give you that perfect tone that you're after. We're gonna be building a low voltage battery simulator today. Now this is nothing new, but what makes this project really cool is that it's foot switchable and it has a voltage readout, which I think is essential for getting repeatable results. Now I'm gonna be the first to admit I was totally wrong about this type of effect. I always thought this sort of thing was more for people who are into those sort of glitchy, Velcro-y, sort of broken fuzz type sounds. Well, my eyes have been open, people, and I have to say it's pretty awesome what it can do to a huge array of effects. Actually, the amount of nuanced, detailed things it can do to all sorts of different pedals is actually pretty amazing. I'd class this more as a utility or a symbiotic effects pedal because it gets you more mileage out of things that you already have. Okay, let's check what we need to build this thing. We're just gonna have a quick look at some of the parts that you're gonna need today. So, firstly, you're gonna need an enclosure. This is a 1590B style enclosure, which is pretty common. A foot switch. I'm gonna use a three pole double throw. This is a uh, tie away switch. One of these displays now i'm going to put a link to where i got this from it was on aliexpress actually a 5k audio taper pot a couple of dc jacks i quite like these little ones these tiny little ones here but you can use whichever one that you want obviously you're going to need wire you're going to need solder and that sort of stuff as well next i'm going to mark up this enclosure and drill it out So it's a very, very simple circuit. Now, a couple of things to note that all the holes are like standard holes. Now, when I build these things, I don't really plan it out. I like to improvise build because it's not something, I've never built one of these before, so I'm kind of doing it on the fly. But you sort of lay out your parts on top of the enclosure to see where everything's gonna fit. The holes here are pretty standard, eight millimeter holes for your DC jacks. That's a seven millimeter hole for your pot, 12 for the switch, that's a cool tie away switch. Eight millimeters for the LED bezel. So there's a bezel that you push in with the LED inside it. And the gauge, now this was an interesting one. I bought a stepper bit for that, it's quite cheap. It was a four millimeter to 32 millimeter stepper bit. That's the stepper bit there and it slowly steps up the hole size right up from four millimeters up to 32. And I need a 30 millimeter hole size for this. So you just set your drill press or you could do it by hand on a really slow, low setting and just go very, very slowly. Put your pilot holes in first and get up to that 30 mils. And yeah, perfect fit, absolute perfect fit. Now I've got these two DC jacks in the top here. This one on this side is my input DC jack and here's my output one here. Now I'll just show you how I've wired this up just so you can do it yourself at home. Now something to remember is that you don't actually need this display in the foot switch. You can just wire up a pot as a variable resistor between these two DC jacks. The cool thing about this is having a readout for me is kind of essential and I like the fact that it's foot switchable as well. So the two negative lugs on the DC jacks are connected together and then I'm coming out of this positive lug into the center lug on this pot. Now this pot is wide as a variable resistor, this 5k audio taper pot. So that means this lug on this far side is not connected to anything. Then I've got this lug here which goes down to the left center lug on the foot switch. On the other side of that goes up and around to the output DC jacks positive lug which is connected to the positive wire of the gauge and the negative wire of the gauge is just connected to the negative. So that means the, the gauge is always monitoring the output voltage. From the center lug here, which is my nine volts, my incoming nine volts, I'm going round all the way and connecting to the LED. And then from the LED, the same nine volts is coming up and connecting to this bottom left lug. So what that does is when the foot switch is pressed and the LED turns off, these two lugs get connected together, which is essentially connecting or joining these two lugs on this pot together, bypassing the pot. So the pot no longer can do anything. And I like that arrangement because the DC is not being completely disconnected and then reconnected again. On the other side here of the switch, I've got my negative leg of my LED connected to this top right hand lug. And then the center lug, I've got a 4.7K resistor in series with this wire and that just gets connected to ground. So that means when the foot switch is turned on, these two lugs are connected together and the LED will turn on and go. That is it all wired up. It's very simple. Remember, if you wanted to make this even simpler, you could just go in your input DC jack, make sure those grounds are still connected, into the center lug of the pot, from this side of the pot, out into the positive lug on this DC jack. And that would be all you have to do to make it 
basically work exactly the same except you're not going to have the foot switchability and you're not going to have the gauge. Okay we should probably plug this in to a whole bunch of pedals and test it out. We're going to get into this demo and we're going to do a quick fire through a whole bunch of different pedals. For the plus members on my website I'll be doing a more in-depth look inside this pedal so go over and check that out there'll be some links down in the description and if you like these sort of videos please hit that subscribe button because I'll be doing lots more of this type of stuff. Okay so this is the pedal here so when we turn it on this is monitoring the output and as you can see as I r turn this up the voltage drops. Now this gauge is rated from 4 volts to 100 so once you get to around 4 volts it starts to dim a little bit. Right so let's see what it does. This is an old McPherson FET drive. I'm going to be going through these pedals in a quick fire sort of way so I'm just going to show you the highlights all the best bits of what's actually happening here. So here is my here's my clean sound. Okay now here is the FET drive by itself. And when I engage this, I'm going to start just bringing that voltage down. All right, let's knock it down to 4.6. It gets quieter, but you can hear it takes on, what's that, about 3.9 volts. It takes on a different sort of texture. Okay, so here's a Marshall Governor. I'm just gonna keep it on the neck pickup for the whole thing. All right, let's start rolling that down back. Let's try six. Okay, we've rolled off way too much there. That's kind of cool. This is just a stock rat. All right, let's bring it down to 4.6. 4 volts. You know, one thing you can't really hear is how it's making all these dirt pedals have a different softer sort of compression. So the way it feels when you dig in is quite different from when they're at full voltage. I actually like the, it's like a, a saggy sort of feeling. Okay, that one sounds really cool at four volts, really like it. This is just a phase 90 that I modified, I used to have it on my board and I just put a wood top on it. Okay, 5.7. Four point five. That's actually pretty cool. It's like changing the depth of the phase. Okay, this one's really cool. This is an EBS Octabase, one of my favorite octave pedals. Alright. That's really weird. That was at 3.9, let's move it up a bit. What about all the way? Ooh. Kind of goes a bit fuzzy there at about 3.8 volts or so. This is an old McPherson Rockbox distortion from about 10 or so years ago. Whoa, it does not go. Kind of makes it go the typical splatty sort of fuzzy. A Boss CS2 compression sustainer. Now this is actually a pretty cool pedal. I've set it up for a fairly high, like heavy compression. All right, about. What are we, 6.9? Yeah, the compression feels sort of thicker and slower. That actually feels the best, five volts. You know a pedal that works really well with this sort of thing is a germanium fuzz face, which is something I don't actually have. I've built so many of them. You know what, I probably should just go and build one really quick. <laughs> Thank you.
This is a real banger of a fuzz face. I have to say, I've never actually owned one. I've just built them for other people. So this is kind of cool to actually finally have one. Um, okay, so let's just start starving it. I'll keep it there. It's pretty. It's a bit of a fire breather, I have to say. Oh, yeah. That's cool, that's about 4.7 volts. Takes on a different texture and, and obviously the feel of it is different. Starting to get a little tiny bit gated. Yeah, that's really fun. That's really cool. This is a delay that I made years ago that I used to gig with. But if I slam it with this. Oh, can you hear that there? So right there, it's actually modulating those repeats. That's totally, that's insane. <laughs> Oh, that is super cool. So I doubt you've seen one of these before. This is a Burns London Vintage Boost. And the reason I know you probably haven't seen one is because I actually was commissioned by Burns, I don't know, like a decade ago to make a bunch of these for them. And I sent them off to them. And who knows what happened? I never saw them anywhere. So they've probably just got them in a box in their warehouse somewhere. But this is a Dallas Rangemaster Treble Booster. Germanium one. <laughs> Kind of cleans it up in a sort of a nice way. Not so dramatic though. This is a clone of an Ampeg Scrambler, sort of a nasty fuzz. Made quite a few years back. Okay, I can't believe I actually found this pedal in the workshop and the skull knobs in this was actually made by one of the guys that did a lot of the stuff for Lord of the Rings so it was kind of a cool one to keep. Don't starve it out. That thing is totally thermonuclear. Cool, Boss OD1. Let's try it here. That's just a feel thing. I don't think you'll be able to hear a difference there, but you can tell it's compressing a little differently. Get in. She doesn't feel quite as nice there. <laughs> now it's just a clean pedal. Compensate with the controls because obviously you're going to drop a bit of volume. It actually takes on quite a cool new sort of um, texture and feel. This is an old Ibanez, I think it's a PT999. I can't quite remember the code now, but such a great phaser. Whoa. I was not expecting that at all. Some sort of broken robot sound. Okay, so this is my gun tone bender. Just does that sort of subtle edge softening of the of the tone, which is really nice. Go hard. Definitely makes it feel different, like the whole way that pedal reacts with your guitar playing is quite different. No real splattiness with this one. Mm. 
yeah kind of cool okay yeah, this one's quite a cool one this is a marshall super fuzz clone so it's quite noisy as you can hear <laughs> Honestly, I think it's just because there is literally no filtering inside this pedal. It's just insanely loud. I don't want to be sitting and move on my cameras. This is the Hendrix wah from that secret wah schematic that I posted recently. Such a good wah. Honestly, one of the best. All right, let's, let's try it at about 4.7. Wow, that's interesting. 3.8. That is so interesting. Now I've been completely selling out of red gizmos at the moment, so I have bought in this one. This is an early prototype of red gizmo. Identical circuit, it's got a volume control which I omitted off the final design, but it's exactly the same thing. Honestly, probably my one of my favorite fuzzers of all time. Because of how it does this. It's got insane range on this control. Anyway, enough of that talk. Check it out in my other videos. I've got a video all about the red gizmo. Straight away the texture is a little different. I can in the room I can hear that. You know what's cool about this is how it changes the whole feel of the pedal. It's just something that I find so interesting is how the compression element is so different compared to how it normally is, just how it responds. It's like real, it's sluggish is probably the best way to describe it, but it makes it feel really nice on your hands. Man, insanely cool. Honestly, I think this is one of those must builds. Even if you don't put the gauge and the foot switch in, you can just have it on a, a just a series pot and just play around with doing this to a whole bunch of different pedals. That delay was a humongous surprise for me. I thought that sounded awesome. Just the modulation in those repeats was really, really cool. But it's just one of those projects that you kind of should just do because it's just so easy, it's so quick to do. The gauge is a really nice feature, I have to say, and the foot switchability is very cool because then it's just something that you can use on your pedal board. It makes it so usable. It just gives you more versatility, really, um, over what you would have if you just had the knob there. Make sure you check out the description. I've got links to where I get a lot of these parts from. Tater.com are really cool, easy place to get really good parts from actually and the gauges i'll put a link in there as well but yeah if you build one please let me know in the comments anyway guys hope you enjoyed this one and have a great week